So we're a meteorologist. We work for the National Weather Service. And primarily, we provide weather information to protect life and property. Uh, that's our day in and day out what we do. And of course, that involves you know doing forecasts, issuing warnings, and providing data to the public, but also some stakeholders who have uh, some skin in the game, so to speak, when it comes to weather information. Well, my, my job is a little different, of course. I'm focusing a lot on training and trying to help the staff out and trying to do things for operations that makes their job easier um, and getting us ready for proactive weather because you know it's not every day that we have lots of storms and flooding and all that stuff going on. So there's a lot of days to get ready for the, for the big days. I think a, a big part of the job, too, that's not really known um, outside the Weather Service is just all the um, interactions that occur with other governmental agencies, um, such as cities and states and even other uh, federal agencies. But we also have a really good uh, relationship with ASU, so we're involved with um, not only the ASU emergency managers, but ASU athletics as well. So um, we, we kind of have our hand in a lot of different pots, uh, not just the forecasting, but we're really involved in a lot of different areas. Well. Yeah, and that makes sense on the stuff you're talking about too, like the other partners that we work with, like Andrew does a whole bunch of the fire weather community, you know, Jerry and your that role, like interacting with the emergency managers, and we all interact with the with the media quite extensively. We have the airport connections and other weather offices that we're interacting with all the time, national centers, just it's, you know, probably a good chunk of our day now is probably more of it actually is the interactions, right, instead of forecasting and looking at data. I mean it's kind of it's really starting to tip the other way. Well, I mean, I think the whole thing about communication and us heading more in that direction is really accurate. And we always say, like, what good is our forecast if no one's getting our message? So we really try uh, to focus on that communication factor. And another big thing that we do is also our social media uh, channels. Um, we not only give forecasts there, but whenever there is weather going on, we do what we call a play-by-play -play where our job is really to keep all of you informed with what's going on with the weather and what we expect the evolution to be. And then we also like to put, you know, fun facts um, about our climate and, you know, different little factoids uh, on our Twitter and Facebook pages. So it's really a bunch of different things that go into our job. I find it, um, the, the thing that's rewarding, obviously, you know, I have a passion for meteorology and that's what got me into the weather service. Um, but really, I enjoy how um, once you're in the weather service, you can really pursue whatever you're interested in, not just obviously the basics of meteorology, but if you want to get more involved with the partner interactions with the media or research, forecasting, um, there's really a whole host of opportunities once you're in the weather service that you can pursue. Well, you know, like our mission is to protect life and property. When we do have those really big weather days and you've successfully issued all the warnings and you feel like you've actually made a difference in protecting people's lives and property, that's always what gets me thriving and what motivates me to do better at my job. Um, so that's always like a good feeling when we have a really big weather event and you leave going, this is awesome. I did the best I can um, to help everyone tonight. So that's always like a cool thing that comes with our job, too, is the fact that we do get to play a role in helping people. Yeah, so one of the things I find rewarding is that we are constantly learning. The challenges never stop. So, you know, for anyone who always wants to be challenged, wants to grow and keep pushing their own boundaries, you know, this is a great career for that. Yeah, I would add to echo what you guys are saying. I think... Uh... Some really rewarding stuff I find is is infusing data into into our operations and the information we give out. So I find it I always find it very rewarding when we can provide information that people find actionable or useful. So whether it's good forecasts, good warnings, good analysis of data. I mean, there's we just produce I think a, a ton of that, and it makes us kind of a, a unique agency because it's so applicable to the everyone's day to day life. You know, when you're a student at the university level, you tend to focus a lot just on the science of meteorology, and that's you know, probably your main uh, area of focus. But 
I would really encourage students to expand beyond meteorology and really try to acquire other skills. Um, really, at least in the National Weather Service, and I think meteorology as a whole is becoming uh, pretty multidisciplinary. Um, so if you can get, for instance, uh, computer programming skills to help with data analysis or research, um, or if you can get communication skills, you know, to interact with media and partners, and maybe even uh, be on TV on occasion. I think having those skills will really suit you on your career. So, you know, it's very important when you go to school to obviously learn everything that you need to learn. And you're going to use that when you start your career in meteorology. But I think what helps a lot more is when you actually start volunteering at places that you might be interested in having a job at. That whole combo of experience and education is really going to help you not only to get a job wherever it may be, but to also already be one step ahead of everyone else if you already have some of that experience and that'll make you feel more comfortable that'll make you feel more confident and overall then that allows you to do a better um, job at your job so i would definitely recommend the trying to see what you're interested in if it's the weather service you know hurricane hunters emergency management um, trying to find an internship with any agency uh, that you're interested in and do that in college for sure. So my, my big advice to students is to have a story. Uh, you know, do something that, that's out of the ordinary. You know, you all go to school, we all learn the same things, but what do you have that really stands out? And it doesn't even have to be career related. Uh, you know, take an adventure, learn a language, try something unique that really makes you stand out in that sea of applicants for whatever job that you apply to. You know, it, it's that thing that sticks in that manager's head. It's, they're reading your story, you know, that makes you unique and different than, than everyone else. So that's my key advice. And, you know, it, it's worked out for me. I know it's worked out for a lot of people in the weather service and just out in the world. And you'll broaden your horizons. Yeah, I know. You, get, you guys have a lot of good stuff, I think, and from my perspective, you know, being on the end of where we are, are hiring, hiring people. I mean, that's a lot of stuff that I tend to look for when we get these applicants is not, I mean, like you said, Andrew, everyone gets a meteorology degree. So really having the degree doesn't necessarily, everyone's walking in the door with the same thing. So, I mean, some of the schools are a little bit better than each other and grades can matter to an extent, you know, but it just really, what have you done to show that you've kind of gone above and beyond the, the, the bare requirement that we should, we should select it because there's so many people that apply to these jobs. Now. I mean, even these entry level jobs are going to get 50 qualified people that come in on the panel, and then that doesn't even include the people who are qualified, but doesn't even, don't even make the cut. So, um, you know, some of the stuff you guys are talking about, like internships, volunteering, just going, trying to find other things to do to, to broaden your horizons and, and broaden your skill set. Um, Jared mentioned programming or communications. I mean, those are are huge. I mean, you can come become really strong in communication, and that would be really good. Like I, I point to Bianca. Bianca has done like a lot of really good work on the communication side. And I, of the technology or software side, like Andrew has really brought a lot of GIS expertise to our office. You know, I think, Jerry, you're kind of nicely landing in between that, too, where you can be really robust in, in both aspects, um, you know, and, and really have a big positive contribution by having a foot in both sides. It's not not just um, a meteorology there. So getting that really robust, you know, you just don't get that much in school right now. I mean, most schools require just like one com one communications class and like maybe one programming class and that's it. And it's just not going to expose you very much to, to what you should have. So so broaden those horizons, more skill sets, you know, volunteering. Uh, you know, our office actually offers quite a bit of volunteer opportunity for students. I think more than the average weather office does. Um, we benefit from the close proximity to the ASU, obviously, and the good relationships we've had over the years. You know, if I could go back and tell a uh, college student, Garrett, some advice, I would say put yourself outside of your comfort zone when you're a student and don't be so intimidated to try new things that you might not be great at. Because honestly, I think one of the things that, you know, we're looking for as uh, people established in our careers when we're um, looking at student applications and things like that are people who are willing to go above and beyond, as Paul mentioned, but also who aren't afraid to try new things and take new opportunities. And showing that initiative, I think, will, will almost take you the farthest, even more so than um, grades and things like that. To go back on what Jared said, if I were to talk to myself as a younger person and just to kind of you know show you all that we were all in the same boat as you, 
you're not going to get out of college and know exactly how to forecast the weather and just be, you know, 100% perfect at your job, but you have to start somewhere. So again, like that's why like starting in college and getting your foot in the door um, and starting to learn a little bit more about, you know, the operational side of it and not just, you know, the science and the math will really help you. And I mentioned this earlier with the confidence thing, because I know when I got out of college, I was like, oh my God, everyone here is so smart. How am I, when am I going to learn everything that they've learned? Like, when am I going to be as good as a forecaster as them? And it will come. You just need that experience and that patience and take that time and, and you'll get it. I, I think that's kind of interesting what you're mentioning, though, too. It's like, I mean, we never stop learning, right? I mean, if we're doing a good job, we're constantly learning. So it's to some extent no different than when you first come out of school. You don't know everything. So like even going into new positions, you know, having that understanding that I don't know everything, but I'm here to learn from people around me and convert, you know, and, and then we learn from new people coming in as well. I mean, they bring their their perspectives and their questions with them, which kind of push us to be better. And I think that, you know, Jerry, you're talking about getting outside your comfort zone. I think that's good advice for like anyone, basically, <laughs> anytime, if you want to grow, you have to get outside.